Stanley Kubrick. Robert Altman. Stanley Kubrick. Altman. Kubrick. Altman. Kubrick. Altman. Kubrick. Altman. Stanley Kubrick. Robert. Robert what? Altman. Today we are going to be debating who is the greatest director of all time. My name is Jeremy White. I'm representing Stanley Kubrick. I'm Lionel. I'm going for Robert Altman. This debate will have one opening statement, three 60 second rounds, a final closing statement, and one bullshit flag per side. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little intimidated. I don't know. Let's go. Opening statement. Who is the greatest director of all time? You'll have 30 seconds. Robert Altman. And the reason why I say Robert Altman is because I think he's the most artistically diverse filmmaker. The movies that he... Bullshit. What the fuck? You know, it's just 30 seconds. I haven't even started. I haven't even started. This is the first question. What are you doing? Bullshit. This is just a strategy he's doing to throw me off my game. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You know what? You can have that. That's a part of your strategy. You can take it. That's fine. Opening statement. Who is the greatest director of all time? You have 30 seconds. First, I have to explain what a great director is to me, which is somebody who can make a film about really, really complex themes, but make it digestible and kind of simple for an audience while also making it riveting. So I think Stanley Kubrick <laughs> is absolutely the best at doing that. And I think that Stanley Kubrick, while not perhaps the most versatile director, is far more Versatile then. <laughs> Pop the yeah. light. You gonna say 2001 is digestible for everyone to watch? A kid can watch 2001 and be like, I love this. Digestible <laughs> and appropriate for children are two very different things. Round one, distinct style and trademarks. You have 60 seconds. Stanley Kubrick's style is his themes he uses, his imagery, he started out as a photographer, documentary filmmaker, and has made some of the greatest imagery in film that I know of. And he also uses music and was, I believe, the first to use music in a way that wasn't just a suggestion to the audience of how they should feel or like a, a decorative piece for the film, but it was truly like an accompaniment. I think Paul Thomas Anderson had said something like that. Um, he... His style is, um, wow, 60 seconds is long. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. you talk too fast. I do talk too fast. Um, but I, I really do, I believe that how specific he is uh, with his work, um, period specific, uh, he's a true uh, perfectionist in all different genres. Round one, distinct style and trademarks. Example, talking points, his conceptual mind and ability to think outside of the box, creative cinematography choices, unique storytelling abilities. You will have 60 seconds. Well, that's easy because you just said everything when you was explaining the question. Everything he's done, he's, the way that he uses sound in his movies is so natural. In California Split, the way that it's all, like it just feels like you're actually in there. It's the best sound design where you hear natural conversations. The opening of that where you're watching all these different poker games and then it lands on the one and you can hear that conversation clearly while you're hearing all the chatter that feels like not just background noise. Uh, you get a hand in this. Now that's funny, huh? Go ahead, I call, I call. When he did from like images to California Split to the Long Goodbye, it was all in one. Those are three wildly different movies made in such a short like time span. They're not, you're doing this, you want to call bullshit on that? I don't know about so wildly. You said, it, images is like a full on psychological thriller. It's nothing like The Long Goodbye. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like California Split. Okay. It's nothing, and then he also made Popeyes, which was a crazy movie, which was a crazy swing. He made a big studio movie. <laughs> so I don't know, he's just been all, and then you have, what else, uh, The Player? He's, he's, Nashville's all improv. Damn it, so many thoughts come to you at once and you don't think about it. I can tell that you looked up Robert Altman on IMDb. You were able to list four or five of his films. And I heard you talk a lot about sound design, which is an important part of filmmaking, but when it comes to the big picture in a film, I don't necessarily think of, of sound design first. I think of story, I think of themes, 
I think of even cinematography. So I think it's interesting that your first instinct was to go to uh, sound design. Be because California I was talking, because specifically I was talking about how his movies feel natural, the opposite of Kubrick, where it's just his movies feel like he was so focused on the technical side of things, You're whereas right. Altman was the opposite, where he's like rogue and just free. And so that's why I called him artistically diverse, because he Bullshit. just did what he want off of instinct. Uh, yes. Without I, perfecting. I will agree. I do. I love Altman, and I think you're you're absolutely right. There was like an improvisational like aspect to how he got his performances, to his camera work, and he let the whole world really exist. I love Robert Altman, but there's just so much like perfection and purpose behind every single shot and every single moment in a Kubrick film. Round two, breath of work. You will have 60 seconds. I'm gonna talk a little bit slower this time, okay? <laughs> um, after Lolita, I believe that Kubrick made maybe seven films after Lolita, and I believe six out of eight of those are masterpieces, and that can almost not be denied. Um, and they're all over the place. It is Lolita, it's Barry Lyndon, it's Full Metal Jacket, it's Dr. Strangelove, it's really like all over the map. The Shining, the horror, 2001, and sci-fi. It really like crosses the, the spectrum of all different sorts of genres. And when you talk about influence, I mean, every Jonathan Glazer, Paul Thomas Anderson, Steven Spielberg, there's almost like no incredibly accomplished director living today that hasn't cited Kubrick as a, as a huge and massive influence in their work. 27 Academy Award nominations, I believe it was. Hmm. Oh, somebody did a lot of research. I did some research. Yeah, okay. Fine. This round is all about Altman's overall body of work. You will have 60 seconds. Okay. So, I will say the difference, while Kubrick was more intentional with the amount of movies he made, it was smaller. I do, I, I, I mean, I think that goes into part with Altman, whereas he wasn't so precious and he was just like making things and he wanted to find something that just felt real. Like Matt, well, Matt, he, you talk about Kubrick going through all these different like genres. The only one that Altman didn't do was, I guess, <laughs> sci-fi, because MASH is a, like a satire on Army. Sure and then works. California Split also is considered the greatest gambling movie of all time, probably. Elliot Gold in him, The Long Goodbye is a great noir. And then he made Shortcuts, which also was highly influential to Paul Thomas Anderson as well. Um, I think you can see his DNA in a lot of stuff that's come out like more recently too, where people are now going back to him. Obviously, Safdies, um, it's all over the place. And now this light just threw me off for a second, but that's okay because I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's really difficult for me because I, I agree with you. Robert Altman is a really wonderful filmmaker. And you're right, like he, he seemed to have like, to an extent, like a bit more of like a creative motor maybe. Like he, he had to get things out there. But if you're going like masterpiece to masterpiece, in my opinion, it doesn't what, compete. Which would you say is Kubrick's masterpiece? Well, he doesn't just have one. So you wouldn't say there's one masterpiece that people refer to? I think 2001, Clockwork, Shining, Full Metal Jacket, um, Doctor Strange Love. Those would be my top yeah. five, and in something like that order, I yeah. guess. By and the then, can you name five masterpieces from Altman? By the way, Nashville, um, Mash, The Long Goodbye, Shortcuts, and. I mean, people would probably say... Masterpiece, I'm talking about masterpieces. You wouldn't say those movies are masterpieces. No, 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 I'm just making sure that you know what you're gonna say next. I know what I'm saying. Okay. I know what I'm saying. <laughs> no, you're trying to throw me off right now. By the way, I know I'm I'm doing an uphill battle right I now. I just know you're reaching and that's what's bullshit. Yeah, here we Wait, go. What am I reaching about? What specifically? Well, because you're trying to name a fifth, you're naming a I fifth. I let go of the you fifth can't. one, I said four. It's upside down. I can't read upside down. Says bullshit. Whatever. I said the player. No, you didn't. I thought I said the player. I no. swear, I thought I said the player. I'm so mad because that was the one I said I said the player. So what's I another one? I love the one? player. California Split and the player are my favorites. Yeah. I know. I'm so mad that I thought I said that. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Nashville before the player. Nashville is a three-hour movie that's all improv. I think that's crazy. I think yeah. that's so yeah, tight. Yeah. Round three: influence and legacy. You have 60 seconds. Okay. 
So uh, Kubrick, when we talk about uh, directors and influences, like I already mentioned, we had PTA, we had Jonathan Glazer, we had Steven Spielberg, and I, I think I, I mentioned those directors because Spielberg obviously done a lot of sci-fi. I, I really think without 2001, and I would even argue Clockwork, Clockwork uh, sci-fi could exist in the way it does today, or these like films about dystopian futures and stuff like that. Clockwork was- I'm gonna call bullshit uh -oh. immediately. <laughs> Come on, Explain man. yourself. I, dude, you ever heard of this movie called, what is that called, Metropolis? Sure. Sci-fi movies that existed that influenced him. Still, <laughs> I know there's sci-fi movies before 2001. <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> hey, this is what you did to me. I know, I'm stuck now. Um, influences, influences, zeitgeist. Okay, so. Even a film like Eyes Wide Shut, which is a movie that I didn't understand when I first watched it, but have watched it more recently and really enjoy, just think about the way that it's, it's affected like culture and the zeitgeist, right? This was one of his most or least popular films, and it's mentioned all the time. Eyes Wide Shut parties, people mention Eyes Wide Shut and masks. And... Have you been to an Eyes Wide Shut party? I haven't been to one, but I know they're yeah. out there, and that's because of Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> yeah. This round is all about the legacy of Altman as a director. You will have 60 seconds. I don't need 60 seconds. I only need to say one movie and how it influenced this other movie that's influenced everybody. Shortcuts, Magnolia. That's all I have to say. Hmm. Hmm. That's all I have to say. That's wait, wait, all wait, I have wait, to say. Wait, wait, wait. So let me make sure I understand this correctly. So. You said that Magnolia has influenced every other film? Paul Thomas Anderson has. I'm That's talking about the guy. That's not what you guy. said. Fine, fine, you make me articulate myself. I'm saying, <laughs> short, I'm saying Robert Altman. Influenced a director. Who's influenced. Who's very influential. Yeah, he's, he's, every, the, the, he's the one behind. He's every director's favorite director. Yeah, Kubrick was the one that, he was everyone's PTA's favorite. Who's PTA's favorite director? It's not Kubrick. I it's not don't Kubrick. Know. It's not Kubrick. It's not. It's not <laughs> Kubrick. I call Bush. How is the rest of my time to say bullshit and hold this up? It's not. <laughs> Who is it? All right, we're in the weeds. Closing statement. You'll have thirty seconds. All right, here we go. I do believe that Stanley Kubrick has influenced more directors, even gifted directors. We're talking about Spielberg, we're talking about PTA, we're talking about Lars von Trier, we're talking about some of the greatest directors of our time have all cited. Kubrick as, if not their very favorite director, perhaps the most influential director for them. So if all of these directors that living today have been influenced so greatly by Stanley Kubrick, how can Kubrick not be the greatest director? I mean, you make a strong case there. Very strong case. <laughs> That's I have nothing else, That's, I, just, right. I just want you on a cliff. This is your last chance to defend Robert Altman. You will have 30 seconds. I call him the greatest, not because of his body of work, but the inspiration of the freedom of what he does. If you're a director and you're getting into movies, you don't skip over Robert Altman. You look at his work and you see how diverse it is and you're like, oh, this man just made what he felt. And I think that's what's more influential than Stanley Kubrick going geeking out technical over like making lenses for this specific thing. Yeah, we know he's great. We all know that, whatever. We're getting past that. We're going off something that you can't, that you can't, that you can't quite grasp with words. It's just a feeling. By the way, I just want to say for the record, I don't think Robert Altman is a better director than Stanley Kubrick. Oh. But. <laughs> Wait a minute. But. But. Sorry. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to say the words out loud because I hate losing. But I do know that Kubrick is better than Altman. I'm so happy. I love Robert Altman. I love you, Lionel. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to to shake on it as long as you know that I won. See, I don't, we don't need these caveats. We, we can just shake on it and say, well done, I guess. Well, let me ask you this. Mm. Who would make a better episode of The Bear? Yeah, go ahead and hold your head in shame because you know the answer. Go ahead and say it out loud so we can all hear it in this studio. I do believe Robert Haltman would make a better episode of The Bear than Stanley Kubrick. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Mm.